Welcome to this Manatees tutorial for those at the intermediate stage of painting. I'm first of all laying in a wash for the sky of Windsor Blue and it's very basic, no clouds, just a clear blue sky, a little lighter as it comes down to the horizon area where the sand dunes will be. The paper is Arsh 300 pound rough the paints are Windsor & Newton Artist Quality and there are various brushes that I'll describe. At the moment I'm using a mop type brush, something like a 20 or 24 will do. And this is a Pro Art brush. So I'm laying in a combination now of the Windsor Blue and Lisbon Crimson to show under the water. Please like and subscribe because you will be notified of all future videos and it's all free. Still using the mop type brush and also you can jump to uh, number 10 and number 12 as you get to finer detail. Now once I've done this stage, I then will dry the brush entirely and go over certain parts of the painting whilst it's still wet to lift here and there. And that will show variation under the water and onto the seabed. Because of course, light is shining through from above and it, it does show different levels of light and dark under the water. Now we have the ocean meeting the beach area and I've dropped to a tiny quarter size flat brush and laying in those with Windsor Blue and try to break them up as much as possible as little wave wavelets reaching the shore. Lay those in first and then once we've done those we'll add some to the top of the water where it's yet to reach the beach area. Still the basic blue color. And do remember that when you lay your colors down, they look a bit dark at first, but they lighten. Also remember that um, when having to do the videos, the lights we have to use are quite intense. So the final painting will, will look a bit darker than this. Now gone to a half size flat brush and laying in the sandy area at the beach and it comes up a little bit here and there where it's onto the sand dunes. Then Windsor Blue and the Windsor Yellow and perhaps some yellow ochre. You can choose to vary it and just laying in the sand dunes and fusing in to the wet of the sandy beach area. That sandy beach area can be the winds of yellow and uh, yellow ochre mixed together. You can decide what what works for you. Now, the reason why I've included the beach area is to give much more of the impression of being underwater for the manatees. The manatees and the fish were all drawn in with light pencil. I normally use a HB something like that because it's um, dark enough but not too dark so it can show nice thin lines the fish that you see that they've painted in for added interest and movement are mullet and there'll be a few more of those added later so i have um painted in the manatees on the right because I wanted to keep the video as short as possible because it's the same principle of painting each one. So they've been painted in first and you can see how they look now having been painted. And then I'm replicating that on the main principle manatee at the moment. I lay in a dark wash first of all in the shadow areas closest to the ocean floor because the light come in above, of course. And then I just fuse in with some clear water on the dark pigment as a wet and wet. 
And these manatees, once you observe them underwater, you'll see that they've often got a green tinge on the top of their bodies, which I'm doing now. And that, that's coming on nicely and it will lighten. I'm using mainly a number four Pro Art rounded brush at this stage, and I will later drop down to a number one or a number two for fine detail, like now, a very tiny brush. And these manatee have tiny little eyes, very dark. And they also, their mouth area has like a permanent smile on them because of the way that it's shaped. And you'll see that uh, little whisker areas are dotted in. And of course, the snout areas at the top where they come to the surface of the water to breathe. So continue with that. Just think about the lights and the darks where they are. And then I do a little bit of a hatch type uh, shape pattern on, on the body of the manatees, which you'll observe in nature is a true reflection of how they are. And you can, I very rarely, but you can choose to lay in some white pigment on this occasion to show the light coming from above, catching the tops of the bodies of the manatees. For the ocean floor, I'm using the Windsor yellow and some yellow ochre mixed together, just as a big wash along the bottom there. And you'll see we'll add some darker colors and we'll vary it as much as possible to show interesting shapes and make it realistic as being the seabed. Most of the time using the mop size brush and you'll see occasionally I have a tissue, I always keep a tissue on the side where I can dab a brush, take off pigment as needed. Now I'm using some burnt umber in that wet in wet wash, letting that all fuse together, then add in some greens, winds of blue and yellow ochre and all fusing nicely together using a flat brush, a half size at the moment. And there are little rocky areas here and there, you know, sticking out above the seabed, which I'll be adding in. And then we'll be going on to strands of sea grasses and seaweeds now using a quarter size flat brush, upward strokes. I've laid in a light wash, first of all, as is often the case, uh, for those areas of seaweed and grasses and then gone to the darker pigment and laid that over the light wash. And for this principal manatee to make it even more realistic, I'm purposefully bringing some of the grasses over the bottom section of the body of the manatee. I hope you do like and subscribe because it's all free and you'll get notified of future videos. I am posting these very regularly to help people learn to paint in transparent watercolours. Lots of people are intimidated by that, but I think you will find these useful and make great rapid progress. And then when it goes to the final shot, you'll see, as I was saying, that it is darker because the intense lights are not needed now. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Happy painting.